Today we are going to talk about the best places where you can get most of your money for by selling your luxury brand. If you are interested, then keep watching. In this video, we are going to talk about these five places where you can sell your items and what you can expect from them. When I go through this list, I will talk about the pros and also cons of these uh, sites where you can sell your luxury brand. The first site that we will go through is eBay, second is Fashion File, The Real Real, Local Consignment and YouTube. So the first site that we are going to see is eBay. Now when I explain these, I will talk about both a buyer and also the seller, what is helpful for both. But mostly I will try to stick with the seller's issues. When we go through this list, I'm going to give you the perspective of the buyer and also of a seller. What that means is you get the best price from eBay. The sellers whoever have the item directly come and sell the item on eBay. So basically the buyer is there, the seller is there, there are not many uh, cuts, even though eBay and PayPal take a cut, but that's not as much as other third party sites uh, cost. So because the buyer, the seller directly sells to the buyer, the price gets better. And also the next thing is wide audience and good reach. Now eBay is a global site. So this kind of gives you a huge reach to different audience. And that is the reason I have this. These are all um, pros, positives. Uh, from, I explained for the seller, for a buyer also, the item sometimes you can negotiate with the seller because they're directly selling it. Uh, you can directly ask them to, you can negotiate the price with them. Now there are anything that you take, there is always a positive and also some negative involved with that. Okay. So the cons for this is first fake items. If you have heard many times you have heard, I got a purchase this item, this fake item from eBay website. So it is much easier, like people can cheat the buyers much easily. Uh, in the website, if they don't, if the buyer doesn't know what they are purchasing or what to look for, then it is kind of difficult for both the buyer and also a seller. So even from seller's perspective, you wouldn't know how, who the buyer is also. That is also there. The second thing is problematic buyers. One is a Marc Jacobs watch. Long time ago, when I was selling some items, um, I sold a Marc Jacobs watch. Let's say it was like cost hundred dollars. There was one winner. If I sell any item more than 80 or hundred dollar, I will always make sure that the buyer receives it and signs off the item so that the buyer will not say, oh, I didn't receive this item, right? So to safeguard myself, I usually do that. But I was about to do it. This lady messaged me and said, hey, uh, when you are selling this, please don't uh, have signature because I will not be there to accept the package. So let it be there, it's okay. But it was, I was sending it to New York and I was a little hesitant about that because I said, see, what if it gets lost? What if someone takes it? I don't want to take that chance. She's like, oh no, no, everything is safe. No problem at all, send it. So I shipped this item, it went to her, emailing me and saying me that, oh, I received this item, but there is a problem. Okay, what the problem is? There is no item in there. What? What do you mean by there is no item? No, this package was uh, uh, was left open uh, and there was no item in there. How do you really prove against that? I sent the item. So uh, the proof that I have is there is a package and it was weighed and there is a weight related to it. And then I'm sending this item. That's not what eBay counts or that's not what eBay takes into account. On the positive side, I sold a lot of items on eBay. So one or two having this little problem, I think that's, that's very normal. Anyways, eBay is buyer centric. If there is an issue raised between a buyer, by a buyer and a seller, 80% of the time they will support the buyer not the seller. What happened? I purchased long, these are all like long time ago stories that I'm telling you. I like that LV Gal Galleria 
Galleria, I think. LV Louis Vuitton Galleria, which they discontinued now. So a long, long time ago, I purchased this bag on eBay from a person. And she said that this that white bag, right, the Damier Azor, she said that this bag is like good condition, no issues, nothing, all are great and everything. And then uh, she sent a picture of all and then I got it. It came to my house. I opened it. The bag in the outer area, it had a lot of um, nail polish mark. I'm like, seriously, inside I understand. What were you, how did it happen on the outside? They put the nail polish and did this, you know, painting on the bag. I have no idea. And how is this a new condition? I had it just like, oh my God. And inside I see it, it's all full of marks, full of uh, uh, nail polish mark and pen marks and everything. I'm like, oh no, no, no. This is not a new bag by any chance. Plus this is a completely used bag completely and completely wrong with the listing. So I told the buyer this what it is and then I returned the item. That's it, I'm not getting, I'm not taking that. So this is what happened. Why I'm saying this is, this eBay supports buyer a lot. So it actually sometimes helps the buyer. And also the next con that I can think of on eBay is taking pics and listing items. It can be very, very time consuming because you have to take the picture of every single item, every single place, and also you have to list it correctly and start the bidding process, right? Bidding process, or put it on, buy it now, whatever it is, but you have to take a lot of pre-work goes on with it. So that also is a lot, it's, it's lot time consuming. The next thing that in one in the negative I've written is eBay card, PayPal, and also shipping costs. Sometimes if you see on eBay, to um, attract the buyer, the seller usually give the shipping cost free, right? And that falls on the seller. So everything goes on the amount that you, uh, that the seller receives from the buyer. So that is one of the con, but still what we are going to share later, you would still realize that this eBay gets you the most value out of all other uh, places. The next place that we are going to see is Fashion File. Before I chose Fashion File, I have tried many other websites like Bag, Borrow and Steal, um, Yugi's Closet, uh, The Real Real, everything. But when I submitted my offer for most of the items, the price that they um, said that they would give was more better with Fashion File than any other sites. That was the reason why most of my items, at least some I've sold with Fashion File. So you have an item to sell. So what you can do is there are two options. One, you can send the item to them and they just give you a flat price. With a consign option, what happens is you will send the bag, they will list it and they will sell it and whatever price they get, then they would share the, then they would send the money to you. I have to tell you frankly, I have never tried anything else other than buyout with Fashion File. Next thing, like I said, they are they have better price than other uh, websites like Yugi's Closet, The Real Real, Bag Borrow and Steal. Then free shipping. Uh, I think most of the sites offer that, but I still entered it in here because it's it's a positive one. Um, the shipping is uh, free, so they send you a box or whatever box you have at home, just put it. They send you a label, free label, so you can put everything and then uh, send it and authenticate what i mean by that is you know that even as a buyer if you're buying from them the item is real and it is not fake so it's actually a good thing it also have cons like the negatives let's start the first thing is it cannot beat ebay price now i cannot say this for all the items but most of the item for example i used to have a chanel bag and the flap when I was about to sell it, when I was asking for the offer, the fashion file offered me $3,000. But on eBay, I sold it for around $4,000. You see the difference? So I think I didn't go with the fashion file, I went with eBay. It's just to give you an example. The second thing, they do not take all items. Say for example, you have an Omega watch, you have a Tissot, you have a Salvatore Ferragamo, or you have a Cartier bags accessories right not the jewelry i'm not talking about the jewelry those items they would not take it 
So that is the only negative or con that I see with Fashion File. They take only the popular items or popular brands. The next place that we are going to see is the real real. First to the pro, they consign any item. So what, that, what I mean by that is, say in my previous video, I told you that Fashion File do not take those Omega or the Tissot, um, Cartier bags and something else I said. The, these, this place takes anything, almost anything. I'll give you an example. In 2010, I purchased this Prada pouch. This came with the slippers. I wanted to, when I wanted to sell this, Real Real wa was said that they will take this, but I didn't sell it. I, I got it back. But this is, I'll give you an example of how, um, you know, fashion file may not take some things while Real Real would. Uh, same with Omega watches. I didn't sell it with them, but they have many things like even Michael Kors watch. Anything that you have, if you want to sell, the Real Real may be a place to sell any item and ship it back free of charge. Say you send it to them, they even actually send you a box to put all those things, free shipping label. When you send it to them and you decide, okay, you know what, I want the item back. I don't want to sell it. Then what they do is they send the item back to you free of charge too. So that was good. This pouch, what I did, I sent it to the real real and I took it back from them. So I know that they do it free of charge. The cons is, first thing is there's only one option, which is consigning. They don't have anything else. What that means is send your item, they will go through it, list it, and then consign it, right? Put it on their website, put it on eBay, wherever it is. And then after the item is sold, they will give you your percentage, which is 55% of what it was sold. So that is the only option they have, just the consignment. The second thing is, it's really not the best price, what they offer. With my experience, I always felt that when I had a luxury item, I prefer eBay first and then second is fashion file to some extent, but real real will be last option for me. But if I have items like I showed you, like something that which will not sell on fashion file or something, then I might try real real. If not, with couple items I sold, I wasn't much uh, impressed by them. So I like their service, I like them. I don't think I get the best money out of it. So that's the reason. The next place that we are going to see is the local consignment shop. In each state or city that you are in, there are some consignment places which actually uh, buy your luxury bag and then they resell them. Um, so that is one of the shop that we are going to talk about. Now, the place that I, where I live, I have a, a consignment, I have many consignment shops, but the one that I have tried is the Style Encore. They are actually in three places and it's by three different owners. I think it is a franchise. The positive thing of is, is easy offloading. What I mean by this is, you just take all the items that you have in your house, I mean, whatever you want to uh, sell, thinking to sell, take all those items, go there and offload them, give it to them, they assess them, right? So it is much easier, it's not like you're listing it, taking it to the post office and packing it, nothing. You just take it and give it to them and be paid by cash. The second thing is immediate cash. So people usually take this route is when they want immediate cash, okay? So these are the two positive things that I can think about. Negative for this is one, less reach. See, because it's a local consignment shop, the people or the number of, uh, the number of audience they have, the number of people they know is actually less compared to eBay or Fashion File or Real Real. So you have less audience there. So because of that, because of the less reach, it is very difficult to get a good price. The second thing is different price. So each consignment shop will offer you differently because they assess the item and see what the popularity of that item in that place. Thinking all, keeping, that, keeping all that in mind is when they would buy those items. Let me give you an example. I was actually trying to sell around 15 items, okay, one five items, which consists of clothing and also some handbags and also some shoes. No luxury I'm talking about. I'm, these are not luxury brands or top luxury. So when I was trying to sell, I went to three places and you wouldn't believe each place 
at quote a different price for the same items so one place i went they assess and take the best price best item that they want they took like three or four the price that they offered me was around fifty dollars so I take the same items, number of items, and I go to the other um, style on court. They said they would offer me $30 and then they reduce the number of things that they want. So then I went to another on style on court because I wanted to see what the price is. This also happened like two years ago. Went to another place. Now, I think they actually took almost everything that I had and I got around like $110 or something. So you see the difference, same number of items depending on uh, the people, the popularity and everything, things are, things will sell differently. So I have to keep that in mind with the uh, local consignment shops. The next thing is assess and take popular items. They will assess what is popular with what they have or the people that they know not because the item is popular everywhere everywhere may be different in that particular area say for example you have a vera bradley uh, you know the cotton bag that print they some places won't even take it they're like ah no no we don't take it but some places do because in their area that bag is a little bit popular so they take it so it depends on that so they assess and then they take the item so if you want to sell a number of item maybe it may not happen that is the reason i have that in one of the comps a key takeaway from this is particularly for the local consignment shop is if you have luxury items like Louis Vuitton or Gucci or Prada, don't sell it here. Just sell it on eBay or Fashion File or somewhere. You know why I'm saying this is because of the same uh, um, you know negatives or cons that I was talking about. Less reach, less audience, so you get a less price. Um, I have seen a couple Louis Vuitton uh, displayed there, a couple Gucci displayed there, a couple Prada displayed there. But I always feel bad for the seller because I think, I mean, I underwent them. But at the same time, I always feel like maybe this person uh, needed immediate cash because if they had waited and sold it in somewhere else, maybe they would have got a better price because everybody works very hard for their money, right? I'm not saying anything wrong with the local consignment shops they are great people they do a great job but at the same time from seller standpoint i think when you have these luxury items instead of going for the local consignment see other options which will fetch you a good price last topic we are going to see is on youtube so you have a youtube channel and you have an established channel and uh, you have people watching it and uh, you know you have some subscribers and they closely follow you and they know what you have then buying and selling through youtube is what i'm going to talk here so here also we will see pros and also cons how we saw for other places the first positive thing is trust because the buyer knows the seller and the seller knows the buyer so they have a trust developed so it is much easier, you are not don't have to worry about, oh my God, what if the item is a fake? What if the item is this? Because you don't have to worry about this because you are seeing the item all the time and you know it's, and you know where it came from. The second thing is good price point. Why I say this is, say for example, the buyer, this is a transaction directly happens between a person A and person B. So there is no one in between. Only one thing that may be in between is PayPal. But that's, I'm telling you, the price is much less compared to anything uh, else. So the seller sells it to the buyer and then they, the buyer pays through PayPal and then they get the item. But the good thing is it's a good price point for both. There are not many people in between. Cons. First thing is you have to have an established channel. It is not something like, oh, I have these items. I want to sell them at a good price. Okay, let me start a YouTube channel and go from there. Yeah, that's like a long route, you know, rather than touching the nose like this is like touching on the many angles. So <laughs> that is not something that's going to happen or that is not something you want to do because you want to sell an item you want to sell now, right? So rather, if you already have an established channel, then it gets easier. And you know, if you do YouTube and how difficult it is to establish a channel and being consistent and all that. So that is one of the cons that I can think of. The second thing is, I, I really feel bad to say this, but I have to uh, 
say this. Ad sales techniques that is provided by some of the YouTubers. Example, they buy from a third party website, right? And they use it and they sell it to their subscribers at a premium point. I, I never understand that. But anyway, that is one of the things that it is actually negative. You may, the buyer may profit from directly buying it from a store or even trying e eBay or fashion file or some other route rather than buying it from the YouTuber. I'll give you an example of what I mean. I am not talking about all YouTubers, okay? There are very few people who have done it and I have seen it. And that's why I've known it for years, but I don't say it because like I said, unless it affects directly me or the people I know, I would voice my opinion. Rather, I, I'm not a person who just goes and says, oh, this person is doing that, that person is doing that. That is not right and that is not what I want to do. So let's see for an example. Okay, this is all an example to give you an idea of what I am talking about. The numbers may differ, the, it all depends on the item's condition, how they are and the year and all that in place. So say this person buys a bag from Fashion File. Let's take Fashion File, okay? They buy an item for $1,700 and they use it, their pets use it, they, if the bag is featured is in any, all the blogs, all the blogs, down, up, it sits everywhere, the bag sits everywhere and then sometimes, you know, the videos or sometimes the pets sit inside the item or just scratch the item and come out of the item, all those things that happen, okay, they do all that and then they decide to sell one day, particularly when they sell, it is, uh, either they don't want it, they buy another item. That's one thing. But usually, okay, there is a lot of price hike happened to the bag, right? And then they sell it. So whatever may be the reason, they decide to sell one day. So what they do, they come on YouTube. Now they have a good following, good subscribers everywhere. So what they say, the bag would have underwent, the, the regular, that not that bag, the bag whatever is in question in the retail price would have underwent many price hikes, okay? Let's say at that point where they are about to sell, the bag's price is around $2,500. That's the retail price I'm talking about. What they do, they come on YouTube or tell their subscribers through some way or an email, this item retails for 2,500 plus tax, but I am actually giving it at a very good discount. This is a very popular bag. I am giving it to you for around 2,100 or 2,200, okay? They sell it around that range. Let's say it's $2,200, okay? Like I said, just don't remember all these numbers. Numbers are not the point. So they make a profit of $500. Now, $500 multiply by many items that they have, all right? So look at their profit. This technique, particularly, I don't like it. One of my friend on YouTube a long time ago, she wanted to buy a handbag one of the YouTuber was selling. And this person, because I know her, she told me, hey, I'm planning to buy this bag. What do you think? I told her what I think. I, this is the exact thing I said because the person had that bag from Fashion File. She purchased it from Fashion File and she has used it, like I said, Everybody used the bag almost every time. And then when there was a price hike, she was trying to sell the bag very close to the retail price. So I told my friend, don't buy it from that YouTuber. I'm not saying it out of jealousy. That is nothing to be jealous about, but I just explained what I explained to you right now. Okay, I just gave an idea. Then she realized, okay, then she actually did her own research and then she said, okay, I agree with you. She was very happy about it. See, I can't force someone to get or not. To buy something, not to buy something is a person's uh, opinion. It's a person's choice. But others can provide opinion. Me, as personally, I only give opinion. I don't say what the other person should do. When I see this, something comes to my mind. Usually when a celebrity uses something and they want to sell it, it goes for a higher price. So like example, Princess Diana, Michael Jackson, the item that they had may be one price, right? Just because they used it, it costs so much money. 
I always think that scenario when I see the some of the YouTubers when they do that, it's like basically the sub, their subscribers are paying a premium. Their YouTuber had that item because of that. That always comes to my mind. You know, I relate these two. The next thing I always feel is usually these items depreciate in price, right? Uh, anything, unless it's an investment, everything depreciates. But in this case, I feel it actually appreciates like multifold. So they call it, maybe people can call it the best sales technique, but I call it cheating. <laughs> Nothing else comes to my mind. I, I don't know. I don't think I would accept that. Anyways. So this video was requested a while ago by one of my subscribers. I didn't get a chance to do this. So I have tried to uh, do this video now and I also try to incorporate as much as the learning experience that I had. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and also click the bell button that is next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified of my videos. Take care. Bye.